Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. And it is another new day as I get my HUD back on and my tools back out. And it is time to do some more stuff. I have been mining overnight as there's really nothing else to do besides take the mining ship down into the caverns and get some various materials as you can see. We have got some nickel, some iron, we've got a whole bunch of silicon that we're processing, and then also in our container we have more silicon, more iron, more stone to do stuff with. So, what I'd like to do now is I'm just going to deposit everything to get out of my way, is I'd like to do a couple upgrades to my various vehicles so that I can use, say, my little rover at night and such, and we can use uh, this guy a little bit more smoothly. So one thing I did to this is I added on some interior lights around the large thrusters facing downwards. It allows me to see the edges of the cavern that I'm in, as well as a couple spotlights facing forward and a spotlight facing downwards. So I can use that as sort of a uh, altimeter so I can see the ground, not run into it in any way. But something I'd like to do here is I'm finding that the once the refinery is full, it's not auto-pulling from my ship anymore, where I'd like it to basically just pull into the station, and there's these big cargo containers, I'd like it just to store in these containers, and then the refinery will eventually get to it. So what we need to do is we need to replace a couple pieces here, so let me just clear off my bar, we're going to need to replace the connector, and we're also going to get a conveyor sorter and I'll just grab the pieces I need for those we don't need to worry about the connector since we've already got one there we'll be grinding it down we'll grab everything we need for the conveyor sorter and also I'm playing around with my audio settings for this game because you know every time I record something different all the audio is different so let me know if the background music is coming through the first couple episodes were actually just me adding music post editing so I'd like to see if the actual in-game music works out this time so we're gonna turn our batteries back on we're gonna unlock and we'll just hover above here as we've got plenty of time to hover there we've got plenty of fuel and no real weight in our ship there so we'll rip down this connector and uh, the conveyor tube what we'll do is we'll place this conveyor sorter such that you see that arrow is pointing downwards and what that's going to do is there's a connector bit on the bottom and on the top and that will make it so that stuff that is in the top will get sucked down towards the bottom and you can make this in of course in any direction and such to do your various sorting needs. So now that's in place, we'll take a look at the, uh, come on, give me the little keypad there, and we are going to, I don't think there's really, we don't need to put any filter on it, but you can if you wish, we can just say or, so if we have put our own stuff in there, and um, we'll set this to whitelist, so now it's whitelisting or, that means only or will get pulled through, and we'll set it to drain all. That means that any ore on this side of the this, this sorter will automatically get shoved down below. We'll put the connector back on and weld it back up and then just give it a quick test by manually grabbing some ore and sticking it in the connector and seeing if it gets just pushed down into the cargo containers. Because if that's the case, then we don't have to manually move our ore around and everything will be wonderful. So we'll grab a little bit of this iron, just 100 units, and we'll fly up here and place the iron here. And hopefully, yep, we see the connector. It gets pulled out, and we should see that the iron is now in this cargo container. So there we go, we're properly doing a little bit of a sort. So that's quite nice. We'll take our little ship here and uh, land it back down, lock it back up, 
set those batteries to just stay topped off so I can keep flying. And now the upgrade that I want to do for our little rover as we whip it around here. This guy is still going to be a great as a little scout rover, but we want to be able to drive it at night. So it needs some lights, just like we put onto the uh, miner there. So we're going to get out some lights and drop those off as we don't need them. We're going to get spotlights and we're also going to get some advanced rotors. Probably want to use the advanced versions so that way I can specify exact degrees of movement. But if we just, let me just grab some uh, steel plates here so I can place these down. Pop everything in there, grab some steel plates. If we just stuck some lights pointing forward here, that's fine, but we'll just get a little cone of light going forward. We want a nice wide swath so we can see everything in our way and everything that we're going to be driving past. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple, a little shelf here almost, something like around there, and the same thing on the other side. And we're going to put our little spotlights on rotors. And the important thing about this is if we zoom in, you know, get nice and close, it, you should just barely be able to see, if, as I rotate this around, there's 90, 45, 0. Okay, so if I set it to there, 0 is directly to the left of the ship, and 90 is directly forward. It's good to know. And if we set it on here, we're going to set it so that... 90 is directly to the right of the ship, and 0 is forward, just so it's something we can remember in the future. We're going to stick our lights on top of that, pointing forward, as well as on the center, just pointing forward, like that. And what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to be able to use these rotors and rotate these. So I'm going to be able to rotate these 45 degrees, so we're going to have our top light pointing directly forwards, this light 45 off to the right, and this light 45 off to the left. But now just to grab everything we need for those various things, grab th three spotlights, grab, oh come on, there we go, small rotor, we'll just grab a bunch of stuff just so I have enough to play around with this and uh, weld all of this up. I didn't want to put them directly against each other, side by side, as if we did that, uh, the ship would probably collide with itself and be a sacrifice to the almighty Clang, which is the uh, the community's joking, uh, joking way of saying the, the god of bad physics. <laughs> we want to avoid that in all costs, as I kind of don't want to lose my shit. But we'll get these started up. Come on. Can I not get that rotor part from this angle? I guess I can't. There we go. Rotor part is done. And all we need is the fixed straightforward one in the center. Excellent. Also, if the uh, all three being at the same level doesn't look good, we always just have those two on pylons on the side and then just have the, uh, the center one uh, right on top of the roof. So now that those are in there, what we're going to do is we're going to use Build Vision, which is an amazing mod. If we look at the rotor, we take out our empty hand. We're going to right click on it. No, middle click. Come on. Do, do I not know how to use Build Vision? It doesn't seem like I do. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. There's a mod that allows you to, like... I gotta turn my crosshair back on. Every time I turn my crosshair off to take a screenshot, I gotta turn it back on to actually play properly. I can't remember how to use this mod. Okay, there we go. Shift, left click. And it brings up this little menu. And you can do stuff with that. 
and you can adjust the settings of things without having to like sit in the cockpit and play around with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to shift, left click on there, and oh, very hard to read from this angle, but we are going to set the upper limit to oh, don't want it to be infinity what can we set this to okay this isn't working out for me all right i'm not used to this mod we're just going to do it the standard way that one there on this side is rotor four because i was playing around with this and it just assigns things numerical numbers as they go up. So upper limit will be, lower limit will be zero. And upper limit will be 90. But what we would like to do is set these to 45, 45, right? So they're exact same number, and we're going to give the thing a little bit of velocity. And now what it should be doing is it should be rotating out to the right. Excellent. And when it gets to 45 degrees, it should stop. Perfect. So now we can adjust that angle as we need in the future by going to it, and we could set this lower back down to straight forward and then we can bring this down to say 30 degree angle change the velocity the other direction and it should snap into 30 degrees and we can set velocity to nothing excellent now we have that just slightly facing off to the side and we, we would be able to also set up some uh, controls in the ship so we could say manually adjust those as we were driving around if we needed to focus our our spotlights on something we could do that but let's do the other one which we want to set 30 degrees off from 90 so we want this one to be at 60 degrees and that will be rotor 3 we'll set the lower limit to 60 and the upper limit to 60 and we'll give it a little bit of velocity and it will get to 60 oh that's wrong uh okay the other direction so 330 wait 30 degrees am i crazy i i need to figure this out i don't know what i'm doing here Velocity, we'll just give it some velocity. We'll set this to 30. And see where that ends up. No. It must be in the other side here. Minus 30. All right. Boom, minus 30. That's where it needed to be. All right. Now we can set our velocities back to nothing. And we can lock the rotors in their current position. And as we drive around, we've got nice, fancy headlights pointing out in every direction. These wonderful spotlights, which... Of course, we can't see them right now because it's the middle of the day, but when this becomes nighttime, it will be very useful. So we'll park and we'll shut down the ship to save its battery power. And awesome. We've made some great little quality of life improvements. We'll use that to explore further out. I'd like to try to drive some of these local areas and map out things in the future and much farther. Probably try to get to on top of that hill. But the next couple things we're going to do is set up some defenses, as I'd like to just have at least one Gatling turret. 
in the base. We'll grab everything we need to do it, and we're going to slap it on top of this cargo container here just for now. Just so that we have some quantity of defense. If an enemy comes in, we won't be at their complete mercy. The turret can shoot back at them. But also, we're going to need to make some ammo, and I don't think I've gotten any magnesium yet. Uh, if we look through down to the refinery, no, we haven't got any magnesium, so we need to go mining for magnesium in order to make ammo crates. As we look in the production here, we find the typical ammo containers. They're nickel, magnesium, and iron. Excellent. So, we'll make, say, 20 of those or so. And the materials needed for it are showing up with the nickel and the iron. And we just need to find some magnesium powder. So, let us grab our little miner and do a little mining expedition. Well, why not? Turn our batteries back on and get everything nice and flying. All right, magnesium was over here. Let's go for it. Also, I can show off the new lights that I have on the ship that make it oh so nice to see as we're digging down into the ground. Magnesium. Let's see, where is that? Directly below us, 40 meters, 30 meters down below us. So let's fly off this direction, maybe beside this shrubbery, and we'll aim down in that direction, and we'll start our way in. Just make sure we're flat to the horizon. I really do need to add a little bit more left and right thrusters on this thing in order to uh, make it so that I don't have to be perfectly flat at all times. I can have a little bit of a list without worrying about my ship like horribly falling over. But as we get deeper into the ground and out of the sunlight, we should see our wonderful lights come into play as we can still see what's going on. Small little ship, mine faster. Oh, there we go. We've hit the magnesium. So let's just, again, like we normally do, open up a little bit of space here so that we can maneuver around. Oh, we're listing. Okay, got it. See, that's the kind of stuff I'm a little worried about in this ship, is if we list just a tiny bit, start to fall out of the sky. Okay. A little bit of room to maneuver, and the magnesium is a bit, actually a bit continuing on below us, so let's mine out just a little bit more with the destruction mode on the drill before we back up and can go into the magnesium at a decent angle. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Go magnesium. As really the only thing that this stuff is useful for is bullets and we're just gonna need a lot of it because we're gonna have all sorts of weaponry in this game at some point I want to be a glorious space pirate and take out all of the ships that are flying near me but as it stands now we certainly don't have enough materials to do that we'll probably have to make a, some sort of combat ship with a hydrogen thrust that has lots of power in order to accelerate and oh, lots of guns and then heavy heavy armor because everything i'm using right now like this ship is just pretty much pure components so it's actually very weak very fragile where 
you could put on some armor on this to make it a little bit tougher. But we're not going to do that for now. In the future, what we'll do is we'll make a heavy armor ship. It's got a bunch of turrets on it and such. And use it to kick ass. What? Flying back here. I, I keep... Okay. I really need to put some sort of thing on my base. I keep going in the wrong direction. Because <laughs> I'm just like, oh, where, where's my base again? What do we have our little conveyor sorter ready to pull from the ship as we land lining things up first this way then this way and then just down excellent we'll take a look at our inventory here our cargo container's got all this magnesium in it we'll lock up and look at our inventory again and this stuff should get pulled out. There we go. Excellent. And that stone as well. And we take a look at where it was placed. It was all placed in that cargo container that's just below us. We're going to manually put some magnesium in the refinery and set it to be the first one here. So that it's the highest priority. And I think for now, we're just going to leave this with the batteries not recharging. So that way the... Uh, the refinery can use those batteries if it needs to. Ooh, unknown signal. Ooh, we could go get another interesting thing. Let's go take the rover for a spin. What? Tally ho to the unknown signal as it is coming down. We might even try to be there in time to see it land. And this certainly is some easy driving in this area. Having this nice flat plains-like area to start with is a oh, godsend. I've done some uh, Space Engineers plays where like you start on a mountain or something, you just simply can't get anywhere. But we've arrived. There's also a little bit of cobalt beneath our feet, although that doesn't really matter because our current cobalt is doing wonderful for us. Medium cargo container. Ooh, this is just cargo. We've got interior plates, an enhanced welder, an improved welder. All right. Let's use uh, character tools, and we'll put the improved welder on our bar. We can weld things faster. Yeah. And uh, is there a button related to this? Yes, there is. Let's press it. And we got a zombie drill. We can change our appearance if we want to. And we got some cool stuff here. Let's, go, let's salvage this. This cargo container is decent. Also, <laughs> the top there just falling down. Push this over as I am just interested in the nuclear reactor down here. Oh, come on. Give it to me. Allow me to cut into it. There we go. Give me those reactor components and the uranium. Although it's a very tiny amount, it's something. And we'll grab the parachute hatch as well and leave the rest of the little iron armor blocks here as, you know, they're just a single piece of steel. It's nothing. It's not even worth looking at it. And off we go back to base and back to work. Ah, this certainly does look cool. Driving back towards my base, seeing the mining ship sitting on top of it, ready to go, and the turret ready for some ammunition, which should be done constructing at this point, as we'll park it up, we will park it, turn it off, so that way we can save its batteries, and we can head into the base here. The assembler is working on the ammo as it is ever so slowly crafting more of it as uh, magnesium is being finished but it's a fairly slow rate and a small amount but it gives you enough that eventually you can get these ammo containers done but let us grab these for now and what we can do is because these, this turret actually has a uh, 
if we take a look at the design for it, it's got a connector on the bottom. We can just deposit all of our stuff into this cargo container and the, you can see the ammo is being automatically pulled into the gun. If we take a look at the gun, we can actually change it so it can shoot a little bit further what different things it can uh, target. Uh, we'll turn off stations and neutrals and characters and such. We just want it to shoot at meteors, which I turned off for this, that doesn't really matter. Enemy missiles, enemy ships, and enemy large ships. As there really shouldn't be anything else that it can uh, run into. But if we jump into our seat, we should be able to grab the Gatling gun and go control and take over the gun if we need to. So like if that guy tried to come in, whoa, no, he's coming in, we just start blasting the sky and take him out. So awesome. We've got some defensive here. Of course, you can shoot your own stuff, but that would be silly. So I would just shoot one of the uh, steel plates here. You can see we can damage that. So let's uh, try not to do that. in the future. Oh no, I actually used up a little bit of steel blades using that. That's okay. It was all a demonstration for the greater good. But you can see how much damage those actually do to this light armor blocks, but heavy armor blocks can take a lot more before they get damaged. Alright. So really, I think the next things that we need to do is just continue on expanding out this base as we're not going to worry about power yet these are giving us enough for now this is it's not really charging this battery a bunch but it's giving it enough that it's it's going to be able to run the turret it's going to be able to run this uh, little light i've installed it charges my suit that's all i really need it to do right now but what we want to do is we want to start moving some more of the mission critical stuff from the lander here over. The most important thing being the medical room. Because if we die, we can only respawn at a powered medical room. And this medical room needs medical components. And that only occurs... Without, you can only make those with silver and such, which you can't find on the starting planet based on the uh, scarce resources mod I put on. So before we can make another medical thing, we need to go to the moon, which is a big ask. This is like the, the, the only place we'll be able to respawn is wherever we have this. So if we take it to the moon and we crash and it gets destroyed, it's game over, which is ridiculous. So we have to be very careful with this medical room. So what I want to make sure is that it's on a grid that will never run out of power so that we can always have the opportunity to respawn. So we're going to grind it down and it's going to take a whole bunch of stuff because it's large. We're going to place out a few more grids here. Since we're not connecting the rover anymore to this, we'll put it back here. We'll just go like a couple more out. And we'll grab a medical room. Do, 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 do. Something like that. Just plop it down for now. We'll, of course, we're going to move everything around once we get a proper base set up. This is more or less just the outpost. And then once I've gotten that ripped down, we'll probably start a, like an offshoot and then build the proper base. Then grind this back to the proper base. It's all temporary. And we'll start to fill this thing up. Fly back to this, grind it for another second or two, just to grab more components from it. And then go back to putting all the components into this version of it. And repeat. Back and forth. Because the more of this I can get transferred, the sooner the better. Because then eventually, I'll have it all over here. And now, our medical bay transferred. 
ready to rock. Now, if we want to, we can go in here and we can change our various things. We've actually got like a rainbow suit, but I kind of like having the normal suit. Uh, that's the normal suit because it's got the nice blue. Uh, we got our tools. What do we got we got a zombie something, right? It was a zombie drill. Nice. So, so I looks all beat up and stuff. Got a leopard print one. We've also got a medieval drill, a veteran drill. We'll just leave everything on their veteran. things excellent all right uh, probably for the rest of this episode i just gotta go mining i gotta get more stuff i gotta get this uh refinery and assembler making me some more components so i am gonna go grab a bunch of stuff off camera and we'll see about maybe setting up the initial bits of a solar tower get some better t power when we get back. Oh, and as soon as I go out to go f <laughs> harvest some iron, an unknown signal comes in, but thankfully I'm in my ship, so I can just fly directly towards it and get there actually lickety split. Normally in the game you'd only be able to get to 100 meters per second, just as the uh, speed limit, but I've put in mods of course, of course I have, to make it so you can get to much higher than that. So we can actually intercept this as it is on its way down about to land. And get to it nice and quick. Thankfully we've got tons of flight time. So we can just set our ship to hover right here as we don't really have anything to land it on except for the connector back at base. And then Watch the probe as it comes down. Can I shoot out your parachute? Fall already. It's taking its sweet time. Oh, it's actually got like little legs on it too. It's kind of cute. Will it land on them? Kind of. Can I write this thing? Yeah, whatever. Button. Press it. Get special items. Ooh, rainbow gloves. How wonderful. And some, oh, hey, another enhanced welder and another bits of uranium, which we can't get through there. We've got to uh, grind down the reactor for it, which isn't a problem. Get that uranium. Eh. A little bit of interior plates there. We'll grab that. Eh, that's all I really need jump back in our ship, which we should really add an antenna onto so that we can see where the ship is when we're not in it, and it's not parked at base, as I can see myself losing a ship or two doing that. I, I fly out to go get a thing, and then I die, and then I'm like, okay, the thing's, the signal from it is gone, I can't get back to it, and then I just, like, lose my ship forever, which would not be a good thing. But, back to mining. And with the fleeting hours of the day, let us set up the basis of a solar tower. What we're going to need is we've already got light armor blocks, which will be the structural part of it. We're going to need solar, no solar, thank you, panels. We're going to need some rotors, although they only need to be regular rotors, not advanced rotors. And we're going to need a programmable block as we're going to make this a little computer script that will automatically rotate the everything for us. We'll grab, we need three rotors, and we'll grab uh, as many solar panel stuff as we can. Uh, but it looks like if we run out of space there, we'll drop the large steel tubes and we'll just grab a bunch of uh, 
the steel plates there in order to get started. So I'm going to salvage these up once I get this tower built, but we're going to extend this out a couple more and weld these up. And what we want is a nice T shape for this tower. So it's going to start by going up, say, three. We got to think about how long these are because we're going to have arms coming off this. And we don't want them to be hitting the ground. So let's go up four. We're going to put a rotor there. We're going to put a block on top. We're going to put a rotor on each side. And then we're going to stick at least two blocks out on each side. Like so. And that is the basis of the solar tower. Then the solar panels will go on the bottom like so. For now. Just to put them there to start. And we can get this thing welded up here. Lickety split. We're going to need to grab those large steel tubes that I left behind. As well as make sure to weld this up because one stray bullet or something from my turret and this whole thing could fall to the ground if those were not welded up nicely. Oh, and it's all welded. Those panels are getting some nice sun as they are directly phasing into it and they're actually blocking the old panels. But we'll very quickly get these old panels up on the new panels shortly. We can take a look at the charging fully charged in 10 hours but what we need is we need these to rotate so that they're always getting maximum sun so we're going to throw a programmable block down here at the base uh, come on. which way can you go here there's your access port and we will weld it up all the way with that enhanced welder making it all so much faster now, we're going to go in to edit here. We're going to browse our scripts and we're going to look for solar alignment by Izzy. Got a copy of the editor. We're going to hit OK and put it in there. And the only thing we have left to do is grab the rotors here and make a block group called solar rotors. Boom. And now this programmable block has uh, found uh, the rotors. It is looking at the solar panels, checking their uh, amount of power they're generating, and then automatically moving. There, we can see it doing it there very slowly, automatically moving the tower to keep things nice and fully functional. So that way, as the sun goes down and the sun comes up over there, it travels across the sky, it will always have maximum solar power. Where our little uh, solar panels here that are on the ground, we're only getting it for a portion of the day, we can go ahead and grind these down and transfer them onto the tower, and that'll actually free up a whole bunch of just foot space around here where we can expand this platform out to there and then just bring it back all the way here make up a great big area where we can start moving over stuff like the refinery and the assembler onto here although I feel like I, what I should do is I shouldn't dis like just destroy the refinery and assembly that's on the uh, on there and like rebuild them over here I should just make new ones because you know make more. I'll eventually need more than one. So why not use this opportunity? And uh, with the sun setting in the background, we're just finishing up the last panel from our old ground-based system. And then we can stand back and take a peek at our glorious new solar tower. Now we do have lots of space here in the future. We can expand it out. We'll probably do about uh, six on each arm for the meantime. Once I uh, 
uh, get some more solar cells being produced as those I need to pr work through some of our silicon that we have or do I have even gathered any silicon? Yes, I have. So we gathered some silicon. We're going to need to queue up from the assembler. We can actually queue up whole blocks if we want to, which is quite nice. So I need three more solar panels. So if I find them here, I can just queue up one, two, three, and it'll give me everything I need to make three solar panels. Grab that last bit of ammo and transfer it over to the base here. And that is basically it. Oh, I just need three for sides. So I need three more. I need double the amount that I thought I needed. So we can just add some more. Two, three. There we go. So that's going to produce a whole set of solar panels to double our current power generation. And uh, our battery is loving it, where it was before it was going to take like 10 hours to recharge. Now it says only four hours, and that four hours will persist throughout the day tomorrow, which means we're going to have tons of power and we can start doing some cool stuff and powering up some bigger contraptions and such i think for the next episode we're going to essentially lay out our base with just a whole bunch of you know, just unfinished armor blocks figure out where we want everything to go eventually and then finish deconstructing this lander and transferring all of this stuff over to our new base but that's going to be it for now. Thanks for watching, and good hunting.